Are you trying to sell your landscape or adventure photography to fund your photography passion or business? Well, I'm sharing five tips that I've successfully used to license my photography for decades, and I'm going to share them with you right now. Hi, I'm Charlie Borland, and I've been shooting professionally since 1980, and I've had thousands of my stock photos published both by myself and with the 12 different photo agencies who represented my work during my career. I've also been an owner and co-owner of two stock photo agencies, and what I've learned is there are important factors to creating images the markets want. It's not always clear on what exactly makes for a successful image, but there are some ideas inherent in many successful images that sell time and again. Stock photos that are successful earn money over and over. And while it's nice to license an image once or twice, it's even better when you have an image that licenses many times. So here's an example of what may be the largest selling nature stock photo ever. The photographer is a friend of mine and we went to Brooks Institute together and he created this image. The last time I talked to him, about a year ago, he had earned over $1 million in sales and is still selling today. So why is it so popular? It's not hard to tell once you look at the image. It's strong on concept and it's beautiful, it tells a story, and it's technically perfect. While there are many nature and adventure photos that appear to sell simply because they are beautiful images, there's usually an underlying reason that an image is succeeding beyond simple beauty. That beauty in itself often tells a story about a photograph and its location by invoking and emotion. As an example, why do people buy calendars or gift cards or note cards? Well, it's because the photograph evokes an emotion that prompted the buyer to purchase because the buyer gets joy from observing the pictures in the calendar or in the case of note cards, they simply want to share the picture with those they plan to send the cards to. People often buy lots of products based more on the pictures than the text and that tells us that the photograph was successful in prompting that impulse to buy. So what I've done is create a list of five characteristics I believe are important for successful selling images. This is a no-brainer. Sharpness, correct exposure, great lighting, no artifacts, low noise. These are often required for an image to be reproducible and successful. As an example, a cover of a publication or magazine would require technical perfection. In today's digital world, believability has become a characteristic that can make or break an image with its appeal within the market. With the ability of Photoshop to create just about anything we can conceive, photographers should take note about what they do in the digital darkroom. Now, I'm not talking about strong conceptual images, but rather nature and landscape images such as sunset skies that are vastly darker than the foreground, or unrealistic saturation and HDR, or simple overprocessing. Instead, the need to research the markets and see what's being published or used should be the definitive guide to how much image processing will help make a marketable image. For those photographing adventures that include people, a jacket from years ago with colors no longer available can result in images that don't stand a chance in the market. This emphasizes the need to research what's published today to guide your approach and how you do that is simple. Go online and check out the major producers of outdoor products like Patagonia, REI, and see what the color palette is for this year's apparel. Successful images often tell a story and have a strong theme about them. They captivate the viewer who looks at the picture and draws a conclusion as to what the image is about and the message behind it. Now I'm going to stop for a second and address this point because you may be wondering what am I talking about with messages and themes in landscape photos. Well think about this. When you see a calendar and you're looking at the photos, are you thinking about themes? Probably not. 
but many calendars have a theme and the buyer licensed the photo to fit that theme. Like this Ohio calendar featuring a skyline I shot in Cincinnati many years ago. An even better example might be a calendar of inspirational photographs, and if you let your imagination go with that, you can certainly visualize photos that say inspiration, and the buyer will be looking for photos that say exactly that. Now, for the client who's out there looking for an image, they are seeking photos that tell the story to the audience they're trying to reach. Often, commercial stock photo buyers have a theme already in mind, and then they go and search for an image that states that theme. Here's an example of an image licensed to Backpacker magazine where I captured my friends helping each other up the rocks. I never considered the theme of love, hey, but it worked for the magazine. Here's another photo that was purchased by a company that made water filters for hikers and outdoor adventures, and they simply wanted a photo that suggested fresh, clean water in a lush scene and they used this for the packaging of the filter. There was also room for the product name at the top and room for the text down the left side, and that aided in its saleability. Now this trail image, it's not really that great of a photo when you think of calendar quality images, but it told the story the client wanted to say. Again, shooting for themes. The goal for every stock photo you capture is that it has broad appeal and sells many times to a diverse client base with different needs and goals. With a strong story or theme that can carry across diverse concepts, a variety of clients might use that same image for completely different messages. The idea is to capture images where a wide spectrum of clients find that the image states the message they're trying to convey. This camping image has been licensed many times to a wide range of clients, including clothing catalog, beer advertisement, various magazines, and many more. And it's because it has universal appeal. Now, not every stock photo has to be unique, but if it is, then there's an increased chance it will do better in the markets. This would include images that are once in a lifetime captures like events in nature, say a hurricane or lightning in an unusual place, or an adventure image that makes the viewer stop and look hard. This lightning photo has been licensed numerous times and in most cases it was because it was unique. We see lightning pictures all the time and while they may be selling, this image's appeal has been that it had room for text. Almost all the usages that I was involved with on this photo, text was overlaid across the image, but the surprising thing was this brochure was for the opera, and they used it because it fit their theme. There are plenty of beautiful flower images, waterfalls, national parks, and more, all available in the markets and waiting to sell. It's the images of these same places that are remarkable and stand out that tend to be used more often. This photo of Mount Hood has been widely published because it's a little bit different from all the others that were available at the time. It appeared in several calendars, magazines, and tourism pieces. While most nature photographers wander in search of great scenes to capture, leaving home with a list of ideas can often help you create images that produce better results in the markets. For example, you might be headed out this weekend to hike and photograph a waterfall. And if you're going with a hiking companion, get them outfitted with the proper apparel and a small day pack. Then shoot your landscape first before placing the person into the scene for another shot. You'll come home with beautiful waterfall pictures and also beautiful waterfall pictures with people which is going to reach a different market. The people gives the scale of the scene, but also tells a story of them enjoying the outdoors, and that just might meet the concept that a commercial photo buyer is often looking for. In summary, I should mention that today's markets for outdoor stock photography are, unfortunately, very tough. But you never know who may get in touch with you after seeing your photo. So keep in mind these characteristics for your next shoot, and someday you just might be surprised with the results. Okay, that's a wrap on this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. 
Be sure and hit the subscribe button, and if you enjoyed the video, please add a like as well. If you have any questions or suggestions, please post those in the comments, and I will do my best to answer all of them. And finally, if you would like to expand your landscape and nature photography skills and learn more about landscape photography and the business of outdoor photography, consider enrolling in one of my online tutorials at the Nature Photography School by following the link that's right down there in the description. We offer eBooks, online courses again on the business of photography, how to improve your landscape photography, Lightroom, and a whole bunch more. Okay, until next time, go create some beautiful photography. And thanks again for watching.